What's up guys and welcome to this new video about custom dialogues in Jetpack Compose. In this video I will show you how you can build such a custom dialog as you can see in Android Studio. This could be for example a list of selected items the user wants to buy and then you could also check a payment method and confirms to purchase. We don't implement any functionality here so this is just about the UI and how to build such a dialog. And when we click on cancel here, the dialog disappears. And when we click on buy, it reopens again. All right, here in Android Studio, in an empty Jetpack Compose project, we will first create our simple view model, which holds the state if the dialog should be shown or not. We could also do this in the UI, but yeah, I think a view model is fine here. So main view model, which inherits from view model. And inside this view model, we have a state var is dialog shown by mutable state off and this is false by default because we don't want to show the dialog initially and it will be also a private set and then we can only change it inside our view model class and then we have a function on by click which sets this state var to true so is dialog shown to true then the dialog will open and we can get a list of all those different items and then uh, we have uh, on dismiss dismiss dialog function which sets this state var to false again then we can create our main screen where we can invoke our dialog which will be also composable so main screen composable main screen which takes our view model and then we can go to our main activity and create this view model we won't do any dependency injection or something like this here. So we can just say by view models and then this will create our main view model. And in here we can remove this surface and then we can say um, main screen and pass our view model. In our main screen, we will have a box which takes a modifier and this modifier fills the max size and this box has a content alignment which we will set to alignment.center. Inside this box we will then have our button where we can click on to buy to open the dialog. So we can say view model dot on buy click in the buttons on click method. And then we will also set some additional properties in this button. So colors will be equal to button defaults dot button colors and then we can set the background color to orange and the content color to white. And for that, we need to create these colors. We can do this in our UI theme and color.kotlin. And here I will just copy and paste this, but you can also find these colors in my GitHub's repository, but this is also not that much to type off. So feel free how to do this. And then we need to import these colors. This button also takes a modifier, which builds the max width and has a little padding of 10 dp and we can also set the shape of this button to a circle shape so it gets nice rounded corners and the last thing that's left for our button is uh, the text so we will say this text to buy we won't do any string resources here this would be overkill so the style will be material theme dot typography dot h6 and the font weight will be set to font weight bold, and our text align will be text align center. All right, okay, and then we can check on our state var inside our view model if we should actually show the dialog. So if view model dot is dialog shown, and then we can invoke our dialog, but we didn't define it yet. So let's first do this in our root package. We can create a new Kotlin class or Kotlin file in this case which will be our custom dialog. This will be a composable custom dialog and this dialog takes two functions. So on dismiss, which does not take anything and does not return anything and uh, on confirm function. And then we can invoke these functions inside our dialog, but we can define them outside of our dialog in our uh, screen class. So. And in here, we will then have a dialog composable. And for this on dismiss request, we can simply pass our on dismiss. So this uh, lambda here is called when you click outside the dialog and it disappears automatically. But we can also invoke this on dismiss functional, uh, this on dismiss function when the user clicks on cancel inside the dialog. 
And then we also uh, will define dialog properties. So properties is equal to dialog properties. And we say the use platform default width to false. So, and this is uh, an experimental compose UI API, but I've used this uh, a long time ago and it's still experimental. I think we should be fine uh, using this. And what this properties, this use platform default width does is uh, that the dialog expands to the whole width of the screen. Normally, if you implement the dialog with the default behavior, then uh, the dialog is always limited to some kind of width. But with this uh, use platform default width, we can set this to false and then we get the whole width of our screen. And then inside this dialog, we will have a card. So we get a nice elevation and a nice rounded corner shape. So cards and the elevation, just import card, elevation will be 5 dp. The shape will be rounded corner shape, 15 dp and play around with these values. I think they are fine here. And then we can also pass a modifier, which fills the max width or 95% of the width, because if we would expand the dialog to the whole width, then I think this wouldn't look like a dialog at all. So let's say 95% for that. And we will also give this card a little border. So border will be one DP, the color will be orange, and the shape will be again our rounded corner shape with 15 dp and then we can open this card scope and in here we will have a column which also takes a modifier this modifier fills the max width and has a padding of 15 dp and for the column we will have a vertical arrangement and the arrangement will be spaced by 25 dp and then we can open the column scope here this column will be our root composable for the elements in our dialog. And since we have set this use platform default width to false, we are really flexible in building our UI for the dialog. So we can build almost any UI here and we aren't limited to this uh, screen width or dialog default width. So we can uh, say text for our uh, main text. So your selected items, please select a payment method to continue and this text will take a style which will come from our material theme dot typography dot h6 and the text align will be text align dot center and then we will have another column um, let me make a little bit of space here so this column will hold our different items we bought and the total value and also the uh, two payment methods. So this will take a modifier which fills the max width and the vertical arrangement will be arrangement.space by 15 dp. Inside this column we will then have a row again a modifier which fills the max width import the row here and the horizontal arrangement will be arrangement.space between because this rows will hold our selected item and the corresponding uh, price and so they get pushed to the left and the right and in this row we will have a text Samsung Galaxy S22 and another text which will be the corresponding price in a real project you would have this price and this um, uh, item the selected item of course in some kind of list or in your view model for example but yeah this is just about building the dialogue here and then we can just uh, copy this row i won't make a uh, reusable composable here because yeah um, i will go quickly over this ui it should mainly focus on the dialogue here and not building up some reusable components of course this would be better using chatpack compose but then we would need more composables and i things may get a bit little bit more confusing so let's just stick to this and here we will have a divider because uh, after these two items we want to list the total price and then we can again copy this row and uh, paste it down here and for that we can say total and here we will have uh, font weight font weight bold and we can also copy the font weight for our uh, total text here which we will 
um, uh, set to 831. So, and what's left now? Our payment methods. So, for that, we will create a row again, and this will take a modifier which fills the max width. The vertical alignment will be alignment dot center vertically. The horizontal arrangement will be arrangement dot uh, space around so that they get somehow pushed in the middle, but they aren't close together in the middle. So we will have uh, the same space around them, um, uh, each item here. And inside this row, we will have an image which takes a painter, which you can get from my GitHub's repository, the drawable resource for it. Uh, I've linked this below in the video's description, or you can also change your own ones. And this will be a painter resource r.drawable.klarna and the content description will be simply klarna and then we will also have a modifier which fills the max width by 20% and then we will also have a clip rounded corner shape with 15p and this can be also clickable so that the user can select the payment method and then you could so a checkbox or a check marker or something like this. So we can copy and paste this. And for here we will have uh, PayPal and the content description will be PayPal here as well. And I think this should be it for our content. The only thing that's left is our row at the bottom with the two different buttons. So let's go up like this. And then we will have a row with a modifier. This modifier again fills the max width. The horizontal arrangement will be arrangement dot spaced by 30 dp and the vertical alignment will be center vertically. In here we will have a button with an on click method and in this on click method we can invoke our on this miss function. So this will be the button uh, on the left at the bottom which we will name cancel so we can uh, dismiss the dialog on click and the colors will be from our button defaults dot button colors, the background will be set to orange and the content color will be set to white. And then we also have a modifier for this button, which fills the max width and we will set the weight to 1F so that uh, this button and the other button we define in this row will have the same width and then we have a shape for this button which will be simply a circle shape here and for the text of this button we have the text cancel the style will be material theme dot typography dot h6 the font weight will be font weight dot bold and the last thing is the text align which we will set to text align dot center and then we can copy this button. Again, I won't do a reusable composable for this button. You should really do this um, in your project. But yeah, I think we should go quickly over this. Otherwise, you will get bored because it's about the dialogue here and yeah, not about uh, some reusable buttons. For this button, we can say uh, on confirm. So uh, when you confirm to purchase, then you could define some logic in your view model, for example. And for the text of this button, we will have uh, confirm. And I think this should be it for the dialog. And then we can uh, invoke this dialog from our main screen. In here, we can then say custom dialog. And for the on dismiss function, we simply pass our view model dot on dismiss dialog. And then we have also a on confirm function, but we didn't define any functionality for that. But this could be something like view model dot buy item or view model forward to a payment method or something like this and yeah let's try this out okay in our <laughs> great ui here uh, we will click on <laughs> we will click on buy and then we can see our well looking dialog which lists all the items and yeah i think this uh, looks pretty well we can then click on such a payment method and in your projects you could apply some kind of badge or um, some kind of check mark to uh, indicate that uh, this um, uh, payment method is selected. 
And we can then also click on cancel and reopen the dialog. And yeah, I think this works uh, pretty well. Let me also quickly show you how this would look like if we wouldn't uh, set this um, use platform default with to false. Let me say this, set this to true. And then you will see what I mean. And if we invoke this dialog now, then you can see, okay, it looks also well here. It's okay. But um, yeah, you get just this limited width if you uh, don't set these properties in your custom dialog here. So um, let's say to set this to false and then you can have a look at the dialog and you will be more flexible. All right, okay, this should be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and can build your own custom dialogs now which are really well looking and yeah, see us in the next video.